Hello everyone, this is Pat Nick coming to the brand new video. Today I am playing on a brand new world that is super flat. I have not done a super flat world in a very long time, but the reason I'm in a super flat world is also mob spawning. Let me take care of that right now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make a map, okay? So as, as the title probably suggested, it's gonna be a Mario Party map. What? That's crazy. So I've already been working on uh, another map behind the scenes, Pat's uh, 3D platformer collectathon. Um, you should check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, the demo is available. And I am actively working on that with a few other people, including spotters. Uh, and I kind of decided, like, like, I, I, I can have another map kind of being worked on at the same time that I can kind of alternate between. This one's going to take a lower priority, but I thought it would be cool to try to build a map, uh, like, completely on camera, if that makes sense. Uh, so right now, my plans are to do it mainly just by myself. Um, I might, it might be cool to have, like, a guest on every once in a while to, to help figure stuff out. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan. I'm gonna be making Mario Party, uh, from scratch, and then, uh, uh, I, I don't know how freaking the series is gonna be. I have absolutely no idea, right? Just doing it when I can. Right now, the priority is still the other map, so, I'll be working on that one a little bit more, but every once in a while, when I get the chance, I'll be working on this one. So, uh, let me explain what kind of world we got here. Uh, we basically have, um, a world with a lot of dirt. It's, it's, it's the, uh, how much dirt? Basically, it goes up to Y64. I think that's just an easy number for me to remember, possibly because that's the same stack. Uh, I feel like that's like also ocean level or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I, I basically made a custom world that's that big, and it's just grass and dirt. You know, I don't really care too much about what's down there as long as I have enough uh, leeway to build stuff underground. Uh, then everything else can be modified. So we're in 1.13. I did like promise myself I wouldn't build in 1.13 because I was like so used to the other command system. But I think the concept I'm going with right now is simple enough to where I can get away with it. And that's just Mario Party. So, uh, stuff I've already done so far is I just teleported to zero, 0, and then I placed a block, and then I set my world spawn here. So, this is the world spawn. It's at zero, 0, uh, and then there's mob spawn. Let's do some, uh, regular game rules. Let's, first of all, do, uh, do daylight cycle. Let's turn that to false so we don't get it at night. Uh, let's do, uh, do mob spawning false so mobs can't spawn. Let's do a quick kill at E uh, type uh, explanation point player. So this will kill all the entities except for the, uh, the players. Do it again to get all the dropped items. And this time, yep, okay, we're good. So there are no mobs in this loaded vicinity. Uh, next, what I need to do, let's, um, well, let's set the time to uh, afternoon or noon, just so that's, that's a standard time. There was something else. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's do mob griefing off also, so, so I don't have to do that later. Okay, so uh, that's just the regular command stuff. Let's kind of get started. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm not going to worry about where I place things right now. Everything can be moved. This is Minecraft. The great thing about Minecraft is everything can be moved. Right now there is no mods out for uh, for 1.13, uh, unfortunately. Uh, however. Uh, maybe there will be in the future, and that will make things a little bit more useful, but right now, we're just starting with the basics, right? What I'd like to do is kind of figure out the platforms. That's the first thing I want to do. Uh, so, if you haven't played Mario Party, there's like a board, right? Like, kind of like a, kind of like a, like a board game. Uh, there's a board with tiles that move around. This actually shouldn't be black, it should be white, shouldn't it? That's how they usually are. Well, let's see which one looks better. It doesn't have to be exactly like Mario Party. It is what it's heavily inspired by, but, um, I think this will look nice. Yeah, okay. To be honest, I don't really like this blue. It's I uh, it's just a little bit too bright, but we don't have the old wool color, so I have to deal with it. Um, and then what I'm thinking I'm going to do, so this is a blue tile. Usually when, when a character lands on a blue tile, uh, they get three coins. So I can actually very easily set that up, right? Like I said, we're starting the basics. I just want to start with, um, with some easy stuff. Let's actually, one, two, three, four, five... Let's try five blocks apart real quick of just another tile, just so we can get a couple of them down. Let's try two blue tiles and one red tile. That way I can have the layout uh, to test stuff. Four, five. I don't know if this if these trails will be in the actual game. We'll see. It's kind of nice for directing eyes. Uh, I have messed around a bit, uh, actually, in, in not in survival, but for so we have survival world. I was thinking, like, what if there's Mario Party in survival? Um, and it was kind of cool. Uh, it's po it's it's possible. Uh, I was thinking possibly of doing that sometime. Um, 
just as like a fun little project. But for now, I thought, you know, I should actually try the creative because uh, that would be easier and I might actually be able to make it a lot better. So, so we have two blue tiles. The first thing we need to do, I think, is set up some coins. Uh, and each each time you land on a blue tile in Mario Party, in most Mario Parties, you get three coins. And if you land on red, you lose three coins. So that's what we need to do uh, for stars. So to make the coins, uh, the coins, I'm going to make a scoreboard objective. So let's do scoreboard objectives add um, coins criteria dummy. So if it's a dummy, that means it's it's you can do whatever you want with it. Basically, it's it's just a number. Uh, and then the display. I don't think I don't know how to work the 1.13 display stuff. Can you start with this? Can you start with this? I don't know how any of this works. So let's just leave it at that for now. Next, what we want to do is scoreboard objective set display sidebar. I'm just going to put it on the sidebar so, sidebar so I can see it. Uh, that display slot is already empty. Oh, sorry. Coins. There we go. So now if I um, give myself scoreboard players uh, add patnet coins score one. Yeah, so I'm on the sidebar. Okay, so I have one coin right now, and what I'm going to do is actually remove that, and it should give me zero. Yeah, okay, so zero. So what we now need is a command block. Okay, and then a button. Not a button, a button. So I'm going to place a command block right here. Uh, the orientation will matter at some point. It's not going to matter for what we're doing right now. And we're going to make this very simple and just do scoreboard uh, players give, oh no, add, at P, at P stands for the closest player, coins, three. So now, when we cover this up, put a button, if someone lands on this space, press it, and as you can see, if you look on the uh, right, right here, I've got three coins, so that works, and then we can just keep pressing this, and we'll keep getting coins. Now we can set up the exact same thing, if I just copy this over to here, that was a, I tried to fly, and it didn't work, okay, and now I get three coins when I land on this tile, right? Um, I, I, I'm like the reason I chose buttons instead of uh, uh, pressure plates is because I feel like people could accidentally step on it over and over again, like just from fooling around. So I figured the buttons more intuitive. Um, I could also make it to where it detects players when they actually go on here. Uh, right now, that doesn't seem necessary. Possibly in the future, who knows? Now the red ones where it's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, so. What we need to do is remove players coins so it's actually similar to this but except for add we're going to do remove however there is a problem with this that i'll show you if i keep pressing this my coins are going down it's working fine look at that and we're out of coins but what happens if i land on a red style red tile again i get negative three so um this is where this is this is like as far as my conceptualizing has gone right i need to figure out a way to not go past the negatives now I know there is a way to, to specify the selector, a, a specify a player who doesn't have that many coins. Just not entirely sure what it is. I'm assuming it scores this. Yeah, because I, I don't know much about 1.13. Uh, scores equals. How do you specify the coin? Just put that. Coins. And then do you do another equals? That doesn't sound right. Coins dot. I don't know. None of this looks like it's working. What, what just happens if we do that? It's red, but let's see why. If I just press this, nothing happens. Um, expect one of these. Oh, one of these. What does that do? Scores equals... Now can I put coins? Coins equals three. Then if I... Oh, look at that. Does that work? Okay. So that didn't get rid of my coins because oh, okay okay I think I understand this so it's this is basically saying it will only work on people who have coins that are equal to three I do not have three however if I just uh, press this twice I now have three is it gonna work now aha now it works but now it doesn't work okay so what we need to do is make it can we do an explanation point for someone who uh, doesn't have coins equal to three hmm. And, or in which case it would be zero, I suppose. Could I put it right here? How do we do that? How do we do a range? Hang on, let me look something up. Okay, so I I think I I think I think I figured it out. Uh, they add this new dot dot mechanic, right? You add two dots and then it specifies a range between them. 
Uh, so what we want to do is equals to zero. So it only applies to someone who has either, uh, oh no, three dot dot. So it'll take away three coins from someone who has three. Uh, and then just the highest number I, it can allow, which will it tell me if it, oh, okay, yeah, it tells me. So there, basically this will uh, only work for people who have coins from three to this large number. Uh, hopefully no one, hopefully you're not playing a, a Mario Party game that long where you get that much coins. Uh, but either way, this this only takes away coins from from uh, people who have three, uh, who who don't who have three or more, right? Okay, so if I say right here, I have got zero. Yes, that doesn't work. But if I have three, it takes away that. If I just um, give myself sixty, do sixty six. Why not? Aha! There is no slash there. There we go. And then yeah, it's going down. Going down, going down, and if I, um, I don't know, set uh, coin six, let's just verify, goes down, goes down, and doesn't get down. So, this won't take us to the negatives anymore. Okay, so that was actually pretty easy to, to fix. I was a little worried because I, I, you know, I, I haven't dealt with the, the new selectors and such. Uh, that seems to be working, and then whenever you land on these, you get three coins. These, they don't need special selectors because uh, there's no limit to how many coins you can get, at least... I don't I don't have one right now uh, okay so that that works cool now uh, how you how it's determined for what you land on is with a dice right um, making a dice should be relatively easy with a command block chain what I need to do first though I think is uh, let's let's just set this up to the side um, well here let's let's slash scoreboard we're gonna add a new objective and we can always delete extra objectives later if we find they're not necessary uh, dice will probably be used though, uh, and then dummy, and then yeah, don't worry about the display name. So we have dice. Let's actually make that to the sidebar for now. Scope, sidebar. Oh, set display sidebar. Sidebar dice. Okay. Uh, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this to a a repeating command block, an always active repeating command block. And what I'm going to do is put in scoreboard objectives, add, oh no, scoreboard players, that's what it is. Add, um, let's do at a dice one. And if I click done, okay, so my dice is going up, right? Don't worry, it, it'll, it's fine. We're all good. Let's actually clear command block output, I think. We might want to turn it on later, but command block output, false. Okay, there. So we don't see that in the chain anymore. We'll just see the number going up on the side. So now what we need to do is turn this into a chain, right? Uh, but what we basically need to do is create some benchmarks for this number that's gradually increasing. Uh, and in those benchmarks, it's going to determine uh, what role the dice is on, right? Um, now, so this could be running, like, all the time. And just depending on when someone clicks the button will determine what role they get. That's how I plan on doing the dice. There isn't like a very simple, <laughs> very simple way to do a nine-sided dice, and that of course is a dropper. Uh, you just put like some notes saying one, two, three, four, five. I want to do a more intuitive way if I can. Uh, if not, though, we can always fall back on the dropper. I just, you know, it's messy. It's messy, right? I feel like this this is going to be an easier way. So we're going to create some benchmarks, and then uh, depending on when someone presses the button to that says roll, that that'll give them what roll, right? Uh, what we need to do though is create a stopper because it's just going to keep going up. We need it to reset though, um, and what we need to do to do that, I think, is do scoreboard players uh, set at p, and then we're going to need a selector for sure. Uh, scores equals okay uh, dice equals um, let's see can we say three. I don't know what at what point. Let's say 1500 since it's almost there, so, so we can see it in action. That should work. Zero. Oh, uh, dice zero. Okay, so we should see it reset. And it didn't reset, huh? Hmm. Tricky, tricky. Always active. Well, now it's now it's uh. Now it needs to be changed. Okay, let's actually set it to 1490. 
Yeah, okay, there it goes, a reset. So, we now have a dice that's moving uh, constantly. Um, honestly, what we can do to make it very simple, right? Uh, let's say you can roll up to 10, and in most Mario parties you can roll 10. Let's just set this number to 10, so it resets, although you can't roll a 0. So we're going to have to change this to 1. So as soon as it gets to 10, it'll change to 1. But that doesn't give a full tick for 10, does it? Would it be better to do 11? Let's try 11. Will it ever reach 11 when you hit the button? I, I might have to look that up off camera, but let, let's try 11 for now. We're going to do set dice 1. So if we now set this uh, dice to 1, there we go. It's resetting 1 through 11. Um, now the dice should be very simple, right? If this was the roll button, uh, you, you can even just say... Can't you just, like, like say something? Test 4? Like... Um, uh, tell raw maybe? Is that what I'm thinking of? Hang on, let's see what the options are for tell raw. Uh, at P? Well, we want to do at A so everyone knows what the dice roll is. And then you need some, I don't know how to do the Jason stuff. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let me, give me a second to figure this out. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying something a little bit more messy now. Uh, what we can do is, this this should work. I'd just like to find a way to do it simpler, and I think there is a very easy way to do that. Just not quite there yet. I'm not very good with commands, by the way. I'm uh, I'm, I'm subpar, and then 1.13 threw everything out the window anyway. So, execute if, um, let's see, score is what we're looking for. At A. Okay, you have to do a selector, I guess. Um, I don't know scores. It wouldn't be at A, it would be at P. Because they, they all have the same anyway, but I think at A would mess it up. What are you doing? Oh. So this isn't even needed. This is redundant. Okay, hang on, hang on. I'll remove this for now. I got ahead of myself. Okay, if scores are... If the score of coins is equal to... You have to do another player. Hmm, then should we add 10 fake players for each number? Okay, let's try die one. Oh no, roll one. That sounds better. It goes roll one on dice. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then run. Let's just try slash say. Oh no, say. Um, you got one. Okay, so hang on. What we're now going to do is we're going to add a fake player. We're going to add a lot of fake players to dice. Uh, score, and how we're going to do that is simply uh, add, and we're just going to put in a fake name here, which in this case would be roll one. Uh, dice one. So now it's on the sidebar. Roll one. That's not an actual player, but we'll be using him. Uh, don't don't tell him. I wonder if I wonder what the account is for roll. For roll one and roll two, I'm sure they exist. Okay, roll three. Obviously, when the actual thing's set up, you won't see the dice on the side. Although, <laughs> I guess in Mario Party, you're always trying to like hit the the box on the right number. Maybe it'd be kind of cool if you got to see the dice roll. If if we could not show the other players, like because you you see it moving like right here, and you have to try like hit the button right at the right number. That might be kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, when we get there, we'll get there. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is now change this to 4 and 4. <laughs> Look at Patnet go. Just going up all those rolls. It's actually it's, it's, it's kind of visually pleasing. Like, that, that, that looks like a fun way to roll a dice. If you can see your name going up, you have to try to get it right in the right roll. That's something to keep in locker for sure. Okay. So uh, you got a 1. What we're going to do is get all these messages across all this stuff uh, and just changing the numbers slightly but we gotta make sure we keep all these players that's why we have all these players so we're now gonna do roll one roll two and this should in theory uh, always get a random roll well random if you don't see what the message is um, okay I'll do this real quick aha that's not right okay that's right. You can do that for all these. Okay, so I uh, I was having some problems and I realized that this was set to coins. So if you guys notice that, I fix it now. Don't worry. 
Uh, now, if I press this button, I should get a roll every time. Seven, ten, three. Now, if we uh, just make the objectives, uh, if we uh, get rid of the sidebar, right? Now, I have no way of knowing what number I'm going to get. I got a ten that time. Eight. Seems like if you spam it, you will get um, like specific numbers apart from each other. But yeah, uh, look at that. We're getting it random. Let's whew, let's flip, do a quick flip. Boom. And people are only be doing this one at a time, so you're not gonna be able to like time it like this. Uh, but yeah, look at that. Different numbers all the time. Got a five in there now. Six. I think we've gotten one of each number now, except one. Could it be that one is especially difficult to get? It's possible. It is possible. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. We got a dice set up. I know it's like a gazillion command blocks, and I'm like almost positive there's a way to do this in like just one. Like I'm pretty sure there's a way to to test for like uh, instead of even having fake players, just testing for this number directly. I'm just not very fluent in 1.13 commands yet, so this is the best I got. But hey, we have a working dice. So oh there, I got a one that time. Okay, so I'm gonna roll the dice and see how far I get. Right? <laughs> okay, I got a nine. I didn't get a one. So let's do one. Uh, two, uh, three, and let's go back here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's obviously not how you're supposed to play, but I get on here, uh, let's put the, the scoreboard players, sidebar, oh no, objectives, let's put coins back up. Set display, sidebar, coins, okay, and, oh, I lost three coins, and then it's the next person's turn, they come over, they roll, they got a five. One, two, three, four, five. They land right here. Hey, they got three coins. Look at that. And maybe they got another because they clicked it twice because they're a dirty player. Haha. -ha. Okay, so that's cool. We have a dice system set up. This this is really helpful right here. Uh, just having like, just having this reset over ten like that simplifies things a lot more. I've done this wrong so many times in the past. Not this specific thing, but when working with randomizers and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this seems to work out all right. And then no matter w whenever you click it, you're not gonna know what you're gonna get but you're going to get something, right? These are all unconditional, which means they will all these commands will run regardless of uh, if the command before it didn't work, right? So all of these, most of these won't work. One of them will happen to work, and that's the one we get. So that's a cool little randomizer. That's a great way to get a dice. Uh, what we also need to do is set up the stars, right? Scoreboard, objectives, add. What would Mario Part be without stars, right? Stars. Again... I'm not entirely sure how to work out the criteria or the um, the display name because I feel like some of these might need a, an actual display name. Uh, so now let's do scoreboard objectives set display uh, list stars. It seems like stars would be something on the list that you can always check to see how many stars people have. Now the last thing I want to do today, I think, is uh, set up a system to where you can buy a star for 20 coins, right? And this obviously isn't going to be somewhere you can do everywhere. Uh, however, what you can do is grab some yellow wool here. And let's make a star space real quick. Make it evenly spaced out, just for the sake of clarity. And let's plop down these yellows. And for continuity, let's put another button in the middle. Interesting. You can now put buttons in different orientations. I feel like that wasn't a thing uh, in previous versions. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm quite certain you had to place them in a certain direction. That's nice. Okay, so uh, so we have a we have a star here, right? And what we need to do, let's work out this command. I have actually no planning for this command in particular, so we're going to try to figure it out together. Uh, what we need to do is slash give uh, at p, and then we definitely need a selector, scores equals um, sc our coins, which equals uh, at least 20, right? But it could be, okay, so 20 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven i don't know how long that can go will it tell me there we go okay and then this and then this right so it basically says anyone who has coins from 20 to infinity give them a star not infinity but you know uh and then alexa oh, this isn't a give command what am i doing this isn't a give command we're not getting physical objects although a Having a physical star in your inventory might be nice. I don't know. We'll explore that when you get there. For now, let's just work out the scoreboard command. So we'll need that either way. Uh, scoreboard players add at P. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to do stars just like that. Uh, and then when we click this, oh, no, I didn't get a star uh, because I don't have enough coins. So you just roll the dice a few more times, land a couple more spots, maybe win a minigame or two. Keep getting your coins. 21. 
Hey, look at that. I've got enough. Oh, no. I'm about to land on this, but I didn't. Okay, so I land on the star. I click this. And it didn't work. Aha! I didn't didn't specify the number. So now if I click done, it still didn't work. Oh, no, it did. It just appears on tap. Okay, so there we go. So they gave me that. Um, so obviously we have a star, but we did now have another problem, and that is... Uh, oop, another star, another star, and another star, right? So we need to get rid of the coins uh, after we use it. Also, it would be nice if we said, like, hey, you got a star and stuff. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, for starters, let's worry about this. Actually, I could probably do both of them. Uh, this is where I'm going to need some more room. Um, I feel like it's cleaner just to go straight down. What I'm going to do for now is just go sideways because that's easier. Uh, and what we'll, what we'll do is we'll we'll uh, we'll keep this right here. And then what we'll say is uh, with a conditional uh, scoreboard players remove at p. Uh, I don't think we need a selector if we make this conditional. Then we shouldn't need a selector. Uh, not stars, oh, that'd be counterproductive. Coins, 20. Just like that. Um, and that should be, that should be good. Let's add, just add a quick slash say. Also conditional. Of course, um, it'd be nice to have a, another command after this that only works if you di don't have enough. To so say, like, you don't have enough or whatever. Slash say, uh, slash say, uh, you you got a star now obviously um, in like the official game uh, it's not going to be just slash says because that's going to tell everyone and that wouldn't make it that might be confusing for some people so but for now you got a star and hey look at that I ran out of coins and can I buy another nope it's pretty dope it's pretty dope so I now have five stars let's uh, let's get rid of that scoreboard objectives uh, no scoreboard players set let's just do set uh, pet net stars zero so I have zero stars don't have enough coins I can't buy it I get enough coins through various means many mini games perhaps like this and okay so we now have 22 I head over I got no star bing you got a star I now have two coins and down to one uh, and then if I want to buy another I can't so that works great Perfect. Uh, so we now have a coin system set up, a star system set up, and the dice set up, right? Like I said, this is really trashy, um, but, but it'll, I'll probably probably find a way to, to shorten it. This is just mainly a proof of concept, right? Uh, so yeah, that's that's that. I think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this kind of stuff, definitely let me know. Because, like, you know, if people just end up hating it, then I, I probably won't record. I'll probably just make it on my own time. Uh, but I thought it might be neat just to share some of the map making stuff that's going on. Uh, if you guys would like to see some guests on, you know, hey, let me know that too. I might bring some guests on to, to help work on some stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. I don't know when it's when it's come. I don't know how often it's going to come out. So enjoy it while it lasts. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'll see you next time. So long.